Welcome to Engineering Studio with Dr. Muhammad Tahir. In this video, we will cover a design example related to tension members. So, it is stated over here, select a W section to resist a dead tensile load of 10-20 kN and service life load of 680 kN using A36 steel. So, we are given with dead load and live load and we have been specified that the steel should be A36 steel and we need to use AISC specifications the member is to be 9 meter long so the length of the member is 9 meter and is to be connected through its flanges only so the member should be connected through its flanges so we will have only connection with the flanges so assume that there can be as many as four rivets at any one cross section two in each flange so if we see this is the member so at any section we will have one rivet over here one rivet over here one here and here so if we cut the section so at any section we will have four rivets fastener per line are to be at least three so in this line the fastener per line should be more than 3 and the BF of the W may be assumed to be lesser than 2 by 3rd of D and it is assumed that the BF of this section is less than 2 by 3 of this depth ok so actually this information the information corresponding to the number of bolts in one row as well as the comparison between flange width and depth it is actually to select the value of shear lag factor so these are for the initial calculation of shear lag factor. So based on this information, we can select the suitable value of shear lag factor. Okay, so as we need to select a section, so here the procedure will be, first we need to calculate the factor load and then based on those factor load, we will calculate the required area corresponding to tension yielding and tension rupture. And we will also calculate the minimum width of the connected member and based on the minimum width and the required area we will select a trial section and once we have a trial section then we can perform all the capacity checks as we have seen in case of previous example in the last video so if all the checks are ok for the trial section it means our selected section is ok otherwise we need to revise the section ok so let's start with it so first of all as required it will be larger of for tension yielding and tension rupture so larger of these two cases so in case of tension tension yielding it will be tu over 0.9 fy so we have seen how this equation comes from and if we substitute this is the factor load so factor load times 1000 to convert it into newton 0.9 and fy so the required area in case of yielding is this one and in case of rupture TU, the applied load 0.7 FU400 and U. So here we need to select this U value. So to select the U value, we can go in the previous slides related to shear lag factor. Here we can go in this table. So if we see over here for W section with flanges connected with 3 or more fasteners per line and BF is less than 2 by 3 D in that case we can assume this value or we can use this value U is equal to 0 0.85. So we will use this value because in our case BF is less than 2 by 3 D and the number of fasteners are more than 3. Okay, so here U is 0 0.85 and the R value we have already seen it we can assume this as 0 0.85 so it will become 0 0.85 square so that's why it is written over here 0 0.85 square. So corresponding to tension rupture we will get this value. So out of these two the larger value is this one so we will consider this value as our required area 
and then we need to calculate the minimum width b minimum so as the only flanges are connected there is no bolt in this web so we can use this formula 2.5 d plus 16 to calculate the b minimum and the b minimum value comes out to be 66 and one thing one thing need to know about this that this 66 millimeter is from here up to here so this is actually for this portion because we considered it as a leg and as if we remember we derived this equation for angle section so this calculated b minimum will be only for this half flange so the total width of flange will be twice of that so the approximate minimum flange width will be 66 times 2 okay based on this b minimum 66 times 2 mean 132 millimeter as well as the required area we can select the section suitable section so here we have our table so here if we see this section 286 here the area is 11,000 and the thickness of flange is 209 and in our case the required thickness is 132 it means the thickness of that section is more than that similarly the required area is 10,667 millimeters so if we select a section with area 11,000 and BF which is 203 so it means both the condition the minim B minimum as well as the AS are fulfilled so we can select this trial section the first one okay so once we have this trial section the next step is to calculate its capacity so we can also note the properties of this trial section from this table area width of flange rx thickness of web thickness of flange ry so from here we can note down these values for example we area bf tf tw as well as ix or rx and ry so we can find out or we can note down this value from this table so these values are written over here so we have selected these values from the table for this w section 200 by 86 okay first check for the b minimum so here we have the flange width which is 209 millimeter so half of it will be equal to should be more than b minimum so 209 divided by 2 should be greater than b minimum mean should be greater than 66 millimeter so here it is one of four millimeter and it is greater than b minimum which was 66 for half flange so it means it is okay so next we need to check for the capacity so in case of tension rupture ten, tension yielding so we have this equation 0 0.9 fy and area of section so 0 0.9 fy and area of section is 11,000 so we can get this value 2475 kilo Newton and it is more than TU and in our case TU factor load is how much it is 2312 kilo Newton 2312 kilo Newton so here the value is 2400 so it is more than 2300 so it means it is okay the so next is this the capacity corresponding to tension rupture so for that we need this shear lag factor as well as this net area so to calculate the shear lag factor previously we have seen that we assume that bf is less than 2 by 3 of d so we need to check whether it is okay or not so here we have checked this bf over d so 209 divided by total depth 222 millimeter so it is 0 0.941 which is more than this 2 by 3 so now we need to select the shear lag factor corresponding to this condition bf is greater than 2 by 3d and if we go to that table so the u fact video will be equal to 0 0.9 so we can see that table to confirm it 
okay so u will be 0 0.9 so here it has been selected 0 0.9 and regarding the net area so at any section we have four fasteners at any section so net area grass area minus four because we have four fasteners at any section then the diameter of rivet plus three times the thickness of flange as the member is connected through the flange so we will use here the thickness of flange if it is connected through the web so then we need to consider the thickness of web so from here we can get this net area so once we have this u factor and net area so we can easily calculate this capacity corresponding to tension rupture and it is again more than 2300 and i think it was more than 2320 kilo newton so it is more than the applied factor load so it is okay okay next we need to check for the slenderness ratio that it should be more less than 300 so for slenderness ratio in case of uh, hard rolled section we can directly select the r values rx as well as ry so then we need to select the minimum value out of these two so the minimum value out of these two is 53.3 millimeters so we can compare the value of rx and ry so here we have noted these values so rx is 92 and ry is 53.3 so 53.3 will be the querning value. So once we know the R minimum value and we also know about the length, so length divided by R, so it will give us the slenderness ratio and it is less than 300, it means it is okay. So in our case, loading cycles are not given, so we can assume that it is less than 20,000. So I have not explained about the fatigue, so no need to go for this. We will see it later at later stages and in our case we are not given with the connection detail so we don't know the connection detail so we cannot check the block share so as we have checked the capacity for tension rupture and tension yielding it is more than the applied load as well as the slenderness limit is satisfied the minimum limit is satisfied so it means our selected section is okay so we can select this section as a final section so this is all about the design of tension members in the next video we will start the chapter number three design of compression members